Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the word of the Lord. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the unction of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for direction. Thank you for instruction. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that you are moving in our midst, Lord God. Father, I thank you that we are moving. Lord, even as uh, Israel marched around Jericho, they were marching under instruction. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the instructions of the Lord. I thank you for the ways of the Lord. I thank you that the ways of the Lord are prosperous. I thank you, Lord, that you are causing us to move in your direction, Lord. Lord, I thank you that you are wooing us. Lord, I thank you that we are um, grateful today because you love us, Lord God. You love our community. You love this body. You love America. Lord, you love people. You love mankind. And therefore, you have sent your son. And Lord, I thank you, Lord God, that we get about be a part of what you are doing in our midst. And so today, we just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We are grateful. And because of Father Jesus, we are grateful, Lord, we are going to move in that gratitude. We're not just grateful or thankful, Lord, but we're moving. And we're displaying, we're displaying that gratefulness, Lord, in your mighty and precious name. And everybody said, amen, amen. Children's Church, we can dismiss you at this time. Thank you. Amen. Amen. The Lord has just been doing a lot of talking this morning through individuals. And, uh, um, we all hear it a little bit differently. Maybe it depends on where you're at. Maybe it depends on what filter you're running it through. But the Lord is wooing us into a place of, I believe, change. Um, I believe there's change. Um, growth takes change. We see it in a plant. Um, we talked about a plant about six months ago, three months ago. There's different stages of that plant. And to produce a harvest, that, that plant has to endure change. And I believe that we're, um, and we talked about this just even last night, is that we're in this, we're in this motion, right? We're in this motion. We're not, I don't believe we're stuck, stuck. You might be stuck, but I don't believe this church is stuck. 
But I believe there is a, uh, God is, is, is ready to um, move us into a different uh, uh, arena, if you want to say it that way. And, and I, I don't know if you feel that in your spirit, um, but there has to be some change. There has to be some change of mindset. Um, there has to be change in your heart in, o- in order for this to happen, okay? Um, God is a sovereign God, and, and we looked at that. Nick, if you want to just pull that up. Um, that first song talks about some of that, the sovereignty of God. Now, there's, got, there's some sovereignty that happens in our life that we will not understand totally, but on and on, the church, we as individuals, have to participate and cooperate with God in order for this all to happen. God has put a lot of value on the church. Not a lot of value on the pastor. Not a lot of value. on He's put a lot of value on the church, the body of Christ. And I think we are missing and maybe have been mistaught um, what value you have as an individual in this body. Now, we talked about that this morning, that, that there is the, the body of Christ, which is of whole, okay? We are in this world, right? We're of this world, um, but we live in America. And specifically, we live in Glasgow, Montana. Do I care about what's happening in, um, in Russia? Absolutely. But I do care about what's happening in Glasgow, Montana. And I do care what's happening in our body here in this church, and so um, uh, you will see in your handout, I don't know if you got your bulletin, we'll get to that, but there, God has gifted the church with uh, different gifts of ministry, and uh, we'll get down there later, but a pas- as a pastor, I care about where you're at. I care about your health, I care about how healthy you are, how you're walking out, and, and uh, uh, I, I don't know how God does all that, you know what I mean? But I have a heart for people. I have a heart for the cheap. It breaks my heart when we're, when we're not moving. It breaks my heart when people are, are getting caught in the storm and, and not able to get out of the storm. Um, and you're able to get out of the storm. Or let, let's put it this way. You're able to walk through the storm. You're not stuck, okay? So you as an individual have to learn how to walk in this place, and we were given some instructions. Um, um, I, I heard a message the other uh, the other day, and it was by a pastor, and I totally disagree with what he was saying. He said that we have the armor of God, and I agree with that. But he says it's all defensive. There's not one defensive or offensive weapon that he has given us. You talk to me about Jericho, and you tell me that they did not do something offensive. The walls came down. Weapon of our warfare is praise. Praise. We were just instructed, praise. If we're stuck, praise. Okay? God has given us instruction on how to walk in an offensive way, in a, in a good way. <laughs> Not offensive to people, but offensive. Okay? Taking ground. We, we are, we host the presence of God. And Jesus, when he was healing people, he said, the kingdom of heaven is here at hand. And you don't see it. But Jesus was moving across the land. And and God's greatness was being displayed through Jesus Christ. Not only in miracles, not only in signs, but through the words that he spoke, through the love that he shared, through deliverances, through salvation that he brought to mankind. He was moving in the land. So don't get stuck. Right? We're waiting for God to do something. He's already done it. He's already given us the ability to move forward in what God has called us to do. And I'm telling you what. Help me, Lord, here, okay? I'm going to get pretty candid sometimes, okay? Because I think there's a fallacy, the deception that, we've, that we have fallen into as a church. We don't see our value per se, in, in us as an individual. You have value because Jesus Christ died for you. God gave his only begotten son that you should have eternal life. Gave his only begotten son just for you. That's value. 
So if you don't think you're valuable, you're devaluing Jesus. And you're devaluing the love that God has for you. He loves you and he cares about you. We have a responsibility to move forward. And you're not alone. He's moving us together. That's what the cool part is. But if you're only coming on Sunday, you're not moving together. We have to, we have to change the way we think. We have to change the way we do things. We have to. God is wanting to move in our midst. And how do you, how do you allow him to move? We're putting all the responsibility on him. How do, you, how do you, as an individual, cause God to move, in a sense, your heart? You open your heart to him. You sing from your heart. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You are the one. You are the one that brings in, that ushers in. We know that he's here. We know that when we walk in, Jesus is in our life. But there's a glory that God wants to dispense in, a, in our midst. That people will be saved, set free. Repentance will happen. Are we ready? I remember a time, talk to you a little bit. I remember a time, um, I was playing football, junior year. I wasn't super good. I wasn't a Brenner Flayton by any man's means, but um, I love football. There was something that happened in my heart when I was a junior. Um, I love playing defense. And one thing that happened is I love football. But the other thing it says in my heart was I wanted my team to win. I wanted our team to win. I wanted them to look good. Okay? That takes something of the heart to change. And uh, they were given out awards that year. I was a junior. and made a special award for me. I thought it was very privileged. It was the most improved. Never gave that award before. Was I good? <laughs> Probably not. But I had a heart. You see what I'm saying? And that's what God wants out of you. He wants a heart that wants to see my brother and my sister succeed. I want to see you do well. I want to see you grow. I want to see the churches in Glasgow grow. We're not in competition. You're here for a reason. You're here because God has placed you here. Now, many times what happens, we get in a little bit of a funk, and the enemy wants you to run. And you isolate you blame the church. How connected are you to the church? We want people to come looking for us, but where, where is, where's your friend? Where's your, where's your uh, spiritual guidance person? Where's the person that you're leaning into? Hopefully he's sitting right here. So when I'm having trouble, I'm going to go, Doug, man. But you're waiting for him to come to you. No, you need to humble yourself and you need to come and say, hey. Okay? We've all been there. Because we try to isolate. We don't want to see anybody think we have a problem. <laughs> right? We want to look perfect. We, we talked about this a couple weeks ago up in Opheim. And uh, we talked about all the times that we came to church fighting mad. <laughs> Not cussing at each other, but man, we were mad. We get to church, right? Get to church. How you doing? Oh, it's just awesome. You're just having a great day. It's so fun. Where's your husband? Oh, he just stayed home. Dude, you're madder than a hornet, and you put on this silly face, you know what I mean? Change. Come on. Come on, grow and mature. It's, it's not that we're not going to have some disputes. It's not that we're gonna have, not going to have disagreements. 
But I'm telling you, we're, we're growing. But you have to change. I'm telling you, Bill, you're going to have to change. You have to change. You remember the conversation we had in the back? You know what's cool? Is God brings you to a point. He brings you to a point. And it's almost like, it's almost like you, you, you run into this conflict or you run into this wall and you go, what are you going to do about it? And you go, and you're mad. And you leave and the Holy Spirit shows up. You do. He changes your heart. He allows you to see, gosh, I didn't see it that way. I was just so concerned about me. But the Holy Spirit says, let's look at the bigger picture. Let's look at the bigger picture. Some of you should get most improved. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just awesome how God just walks us through these things. But you're in a battle. You're in conflict. What are you going to do? Holy Spirit speaking to you, but because of pride, arrogancy, shame, guilt, you're going, I don't want to have any part of that. I don't want my brothers to see me like this. I don't want to show up at the altar again. <laughs> Altars are amazing. Altars are amazing. Why did Jesus, why did the Lord have... Moses build an altar. Why do you have um, uh, Joshua build altar? He goes, when you go by here, tell your grandchildren about it. Just tell them. Just tell them what God has done. And when we enter those conflicts, we're going to walk through them. You know what I mean? We're going to walk through them. It's okay. But you have a story. You have a story to tell about the goodness and greatness of God. He's faithful. He never forsakes you. He never leaves you. But what do you do? I plug in. I press in. I know he's faithful. My God, he's faithful. Sometimes the journey is a long time. Sometimes the journey is a long time, Bill. But he's faithful. He's faithful. The church is valuable. Now you want me to preach the message? Here we go. <laughs> just the last couple of weeks, I've just been praying, crying, of the devastation that has been brought to the church because of lies and deceptions. And, and, and maybe even not being instructed, not blaming anybody, but we're being instructed that how to walk this out as the body of Christ. And it's amazing, you know, the, the, the power of two people, the power of three people, the power of four people. And so what God is doing, and I said this at the beginning of the year, and it's December already, God is going to cause our family our body to be healthy. But it takes you to respond to him. Absolutely, 100%. One of the things that I, I, I really believe that God is doing relationally is that he's drawing us nearer to him, but also I believe that he is causing us to relationally come together. Now, it's not necessarily always my, my responsibility to, to go to Ruth. Ruth has a responsibility to connect with me. You agree with that? Okay. You're powerful. God has entrusted his gifts, what we're talking about. He's given you gifts to be able to walk this out in such a powerful way, not only individually, but also as a 
as the body of Christ. So here we are, <clears throat> looking for results. I could just quit right now, amen? <laughs> but we want to go. We want to get some instruction. We want to walk this out. Uh, and today I just want to know that when you open your heart up to the Lord, He's going to speak into it. You know, even, <clears throat> even as you do worship right there, I mean, it, it just confirmation of that, you know, um, well, I'm not really getting into the songs. The, the songs aren't anything to do with anything, really. Yeah. It's about Him. Right. It's about your heart expressing yourself to Him. This just leads us, okay? Yeah. But, but you, where's your heart? Are, are, you, are you able or willing or wanting to, to worship Him? You know, and, and that's, that's the key when we start moving into these ministry gifts, when we start moving into our own giftings, sometimes our gifting becomes... Um, more important than other people, okay? God wants us to have compassion for those who are needing instruction or needing encouragement or needing whatever. And we have to really get away from these level things, okay? Or positions. Hello! Um, so let's go to Ephesians 4.1. Amen. Ephesians 4.1, here we go. I want you to say this. I'm a mighty warrior. I want to say it again. I'm a mighty warrior. Amen. 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 Okay, today we're just looking for results, um, wanting to, um, and results come after you walk in the things of Jesus, okay? Um, I want to clarify that too, is that many t people are seeking after gifts, seeking after miracles, when really we want to seek after Him. Yeah. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Yeah. Seek Him first, okay? And all these things will follow. I mean, it even says that in Mark 16. So, Ephesians 4.1, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, entreat you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called. I preach this two different ways. I don't think that it's wrong the way I preached it the first time. First time I uh, talked about vocationally. Um, I believe that we, God has given us uh, jobs. He's given us ways to bring in provision for ourselves and our family. But uh, I'm going to look at this a little bit differently. Um, in the, as you look at uh, Scripture... There's the natural part of it, but there's also the spiritual um, meaning behind that. And so we're going to look at Paul here. Is Paul, when he talks about, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord, is Paul possibly referring to not just his position in, in the jail cell, but is he a, uh, referring to his prisoner of the Lord, I am a bondservant to the Lord above. Okay? Which is amazing. Okay? He's not in drudgery, but he said, I'm submitting myself under the lordship of Jesus Christ. So that, therefore, when we start talking about this, that's what God is talking about in your life. So as we, as we approach this, uh, the calling would be um, for you, right, in, in the calling of it, it, the calling would be, are you becoming who, you, who he's created you to be? Be ready, right? Be ready. Strong word. Powerful word. Be ready. Being ready is not going like this. Being ready is preparing. Yeah. Right? It's preparing. Keep moving as God would have you move. That's readying yourself for the change. Here we are. So, um, you have been called, okay? Calling in which you, which you have been called. Uh, have been called would be... Um, Everything that God has designed you to be. You're not just. I, I used to um, say that a lot, okay, uh, as we were youth pastors. They would say, well, what are you guys doing? Well, I'm just a youth pastor. No, you're not just. You're not just a just. You're powerful. You're a child of the king. You're Lord. I mean, not Lord, but he's Lord of your life. And therefore, you're walking under that lordship, okay? Uh, so verse number two, here we go. Uh, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, 
showing forbearance to one another in love. Verse number three, being diligent to preserve the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. A couple different things. I'm going to just kind of lay this, lay this out in layman's term. Uh, verse number two, my intentions will be tempered with humility and gentleness with patience, choosing to respond in love. I think it's important. Whatever the gift that you may be operating in, whatever gift the Lord has willed to you, okay, I think it's very, very important that you are considerate and uh, uh, care about community, but also you're doing it in love. You're walking everything out in love. That's very, very important. Otherwise, you become this clanging bell that no one wants to be around. And anybody ever been around somebody that's socially awkward? You like being around them? No, you don't. Anybody here socially awkward? No, no, not. But you know what I'm talking about, right? And so here, here's the change thing. I think, I think we can change some of those things. As we live in community, we get to, we get to change the way we maybe act in, in certain settings or how, what we say in certain settings. You know, sometimes we, um, uh, because of the experience that we grow, grew up in, Sometimes that's how we display ourselves. We're trying to maybe overcome something that happened back here. You know? Maybe you didn't get a bunch of attention at, at, when you were a little kid. Right? But whose eyes are on you right now? The King of kings and the glory of lords. Right? His eyes are on you. Always were. You just didn't know that. And so who else am I to please but him? My eyes. Um, so when we, when we look at this, too, we were looking at this, uh, uh, it, it, it talks about uh, in verse number, being diligent to preserve the unity of the Spirit. So what, what, sometimes we think, well, I got to do this, or I got to do this so that we're in unity. It says to preserve the unity. It's already established through Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He says this, I wish they would be like one, like we are one. So it's already been established for us. All we need to do is walk in that. How do you be one? I don't, Cheryl, I don't have to think like you do. I don't have to do everything Cheryl does. One of the things, the common ground is Jesus Christ. And we're walking on this road. He saved us by grace. He saved us because he became the ultimate sacrifice. The blood of Jesus washed away my sins. We can walk this road together. Honestly? We can. Now, let me just back up just a little bit. As we are walking through this, right, it doesn't mean that you have to sit under somebody else's teaching and grow in that. I mean, you can glean some things from other people, and I'm not trying to set up a cult either. Honestly, I'm not, okay? But, it, but the world would have you do that. The enemy would have you swing this way or swing this way. You see what I'm saying? Just want to be right here, in balance of what the word says. Okay. So when we look at this, we're looking at as he's speaking of chapter four. We're so ready. We're so ready, and so, um, in a sense, we're going. Oh, he's talking about us in the world. He's talking about what we should do out there. This chapter is talking about what should we do here? You see what I'm saying? He's given us instruction. How do we handle life together here? How do I develop my gifts here? How do I develop social here? How do I learn to communicate here? How do I step out in the giftings here? Does that make sense? And it's important because it's a safe place. It's a place where God wants you to be developed and mature and grow in a safe place under instruction. Right? Okay. Um, so I'm going to say a couple things here, okay? The Lord specifically in these verses is speaking about our conduct with one another as believers. Now, do we want to have good character and conduct and integrity out there? Absolutely. But he's speaking about here. Now, I want, you to, I want you to see this. 
as I was just praying about this this morning, I think of some of the storms that we've had with cattle. Anybody have any cattle stories? So we, it's springtime, and you've got all these baby calves, you've got all these mommies, you've got cows that are ready to calve, all kinds of dynamics going on, right? It's going to storm. They go and, hey, um, it's going to be about a foot of snow, and we've seen it. <laughs> you best get the cows in closer, and so we get them in a pen, okay, with windbreak and everything. And not all the time, but inevitably, cow will have a calf, what has happens to it? Get stepped on. Okay? Here's a picture for you. As individuals of the church, a cow is jockeying itself to get in the right place. You as an individual is not jockeying yourself to get in the right place where it's comfortable. Because what, what happens? A calf gets killed. People get hurt when you start thinking positional rather than what God has called us into. I care about my community more so than I care about me. And it's hard for mankind to do that because we're very, very selfish in our thinking and in our motives. But hopefully the Lord, right, as you're maybe even moving into a jockeying position, you're going, nah, I'll let somebody else be there. It's more important that they're there than me. Storm. Um, where am I here? Verse number four. There is one body, one spirit, just as also you were called into one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. The scripture warns us about thinking more highly of ourselves. One of the things that's, that's really important, the Bible talks about this, knowledge puffs up. You think you know more than you really do know, but you think you mo know more than the next person. And people sense that. Okay? Now, I want to come to somebody that's knowledgeable by far, but I almost also want to know that I love, they love me and they care about me. And if I don't get it, per se, the first time, they're willing to come around and go, hey, let's look at it this way. Instead of just going, ah, he's never going to make it. Right? That's, that's part of the gifts. That's part of the teaching. Okay? The, the, the teacher will, will lay it out there so it's easy to receive, but you have to be patient with them to walk it out, too. That's the gift. And encourager, we talked about that last week a little bit. Encourager goes, hey, I know what you know. I know that you know what to do, but let me walk alongside you, and we'll do this together. That's community. That's the body of Christ. Okay. Um, I don't know if you want to write this down, but I think this is a valuable statement. According to verses 1 through 3, I must purpose myself to live in in such a manner that others can live around me more easily. I must purpose myself to live in such a manner that others can live around me much more easily. I don't want to be a burden in your saddle. <laughs> I want to encourage you. I want to help you but I want to make it easy for you, right? So you have to change. You as an individual has to change so that others can live around you more easily. Maybe it's your attitude. Maybe it's the words that you speak. Maybe it's your motive. But we want to make it a place where people can learn, grow, come in, and not feel condemned come in and feel loved, come in and know that they're going to be taught of the things of the Lord, come in and be all that God has called them to be. Right? Amen. So as people walk in, we want them, feel, we want them to feel welcomed. Right? 
it's not just one man standing back there. It's You can welcome people here. That's part of the body of Christ. That's part of you just exercising your gift without anybody really even knowing it. Right? And not everybody's made for that. <laughs> That's not their gift. You know what I'm saying? Some people are just shy. Is it okay to be shy? Absolutely. You don't have to be like so-and-so. You don't have to be like Crystal where it talks to everybody. You know what I'm saying? Is that true? Okay. Um, let's go to James 3. So here, here's my other thing. So as I, as I love the body of Christ, and as I, I, I'm willing to change and are willing to be all that God has called me to be, I'm allowing the blessings of God to come into our midst. Does that make sense? Even in, in a place of worship, if maybe, maybe I don't need anything today. <laughs> That's not the point. The point is that you've come to, to worship the King of Kings. Maybe you're in a bad space. Maybe you're in a good space. Maybe you're just okay. But we came to worship the King of Kings. So by you worshiping, right, it brings in help, per se, to another individual. How many would agree with that? <laughs> I don't know if people think that or agree with that. You, you, I'm telling you, you cannot just sit here. We can't. If we want this, and, and we're not growing it for numbers, we're growing it for the kingdom of heaven. We're, we're wanting people to be saved. We're wanting people to be set free. Anybody know somebody that needs to be set free? Anybody know that know, know anybody that needs to be born again? Absolutely. That's why we're doing this. Right? He's commissioned us because I love my team. I want to do something that, so that my, my team will excel. I'm doing something so our church will excel. Not just for my blessings, but God wants to display for Glasgow, Montana through you, through this church and other churches. I'm not to say, but I'm talking to us. But we have to change. We have to change the way we think. We have to change the way we approach things. We've got to, we have to understand what he says about who you are as an individual, and who we are as an individual. Change. James 3. I think I'm going to read that out of the message. Do you have that there, Nick? Um, I think this is really, really important. Um, it's kind of instructional. This is how this, we're going to approach this. This is out of the Message Bible. Do you want to be counted wise to build a reputation for wisdom? I don't think so. Here's what you do. Live well. Live wisely, live humbly. It's the way you live, not the way you talk. Right? It's the way you live. Not necessarily the way you talk. I mean, that's all part of it. That counts. Mean-spirited ambitions, wrong motives, isn't wisdom. Boasting that you're wise isn't wisdom. You don't have to say you're wise. You can portray that you're wise by the way you talk. You ever talk down at somebody? Right? They sense that. They know that. You're not, you're not bragging about yourself, but well, the way you're talking to them, they know that you're puffing yourself up. Okay? Here we are. Boasting that you are wise isn't wisdom. Twisting the truth to make yourself sound wise isn't wisdom either. It's the furthest string from wisdom. It's animal cunning. Devilish, conniving, Whenever you are trying to look better than others or get the better of others, things fall apart and everyone ends up at other, each other's throat. Division, strife, envy. It comes through those type of settings where your heart is manipulating people, where you have the wrong motive, when you're jockeying yourself into position. Those type of things happen. Don't you just want this church to just explode and have people just fill the seat where you have to stand outside and let them sit? Why? Not for numbers, but because of God's glory. Because we want people to be saved and set free and, and walk in freedom. 
man, there's so many people that are just bound in hopelessness. I mean, even right now, hopelessness. Right. And you have the message of the gospel that frees people. How do you know? Right? I'm spirit in life. My words are spirit in life. Man, if I, if I know what his word says, and I speak that word out of my spirit me, processed through here, I didn't hear a quote, but it's processed through here. People are going to know that. Because his word is spirit and life. That's what hopeless people need. They need spirit and life. You don't have to get them saved the first time, but man, what a great start if people are born again. Growth, remember growth? Process. One day, one day, do you remember yourself? Do you remember how many times people talk to you about Jesus? You should do this differently, or you know Jesus, he came into my life, changed me. You begin to talk like that. And they, one day they'll go, tell me about your Jesus. Why do you have hope? Because of him. <laughs> Man, I was in a hopeless situation. Jesus came. And I cried out to him. My friend told me about this Jesus. And I, I, I just wanted what he wanted. I just wanted Jesus. Amen? What's your story? What's your story? You're not living in your same story, are you? No. You're not living in that story. Right? Freedom. Freedom, freedom. Where do I go here? Thank you, Jesus. The value God has placed on the church, the value that he's placed in you, Ephesians 1.22 says that the church is therefore under the headship of Christ. And because we're under the headship of Christ, he fills each member with his fullness. Verse number 11, uh, 411. He gave some as apostles. He gave some as prophets, some as evangelists, some as pastors, and some as teachers. For the equipping of the saints for the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ. Yeah, I didn't care if I played defensive end, quarterback, lineman. I didn't care. My coach saw where I needed to be put, right? All I wanted to do was be good for my team. I wanted my team to excel. So when your heart is for the body of Christ, his body, not just this body, but his body, but this body as well, Things are going to start exploding in your life because he cares about the church. Do you care about the church? Do you care? If you care, right, then you're going to start stepping into those things that God wants us to step into. Once again, these individuals, these gifts, right, Ministry gifts is to allow the church to grow and mature. And someday, right, as people come in, we teach them about the things of the Lord, and we teach them how to walk in their giftings. Right? We're not putting chinks in our belt and saying, I've got 12 people saved. We're not doing that. Right? Right? We're wanting, to, we're wanting the body of Christ to excel. I never, I don't think I ever looked at my stats as far as, you know, how many tackles you got or whatever. I don't think I ever did that. I just wanted my team to win. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but you have to be really careful that we don't be selfish, that we're not selfish, that we're not doing it for us. And... Honestly, prayer time will show you that. It will. Um, 
I'm going to close here. 14, verse number 14. Actually, 13, 12. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ. Number 13. Until we all attain the unity of faith, of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a mature man, to the measure of the statue which belongs to the fullness of Christ. You know what? Not everybody's going to know as much as you know. And there's people that know more than you do. And you have to be okay with that. You see what I'm saying? You just have to be okay with it. Because what happens if, you don't, if you're not okay? You get puffed up, or else you demeanor yourself. Or you compare yourself. That's not of God. We're in a process of growth. Amen? Okay, here we go. Um, I'm going to finish it with 14. As a result, there it is. As we walk through these things, here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen. As a result, we will no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves, carried out about by every wind of doctrine, by trickery of men, by the craftiness and his deceitful scheming. Okay? Bill missed something. Bill missed something. But he comes to me and he goes, hey, what did I miss here? And I begin to tell him. Or Bill goes to Roy or Travis. What did I miss? We miss things, right? But that's why we have brothers and sisters. That's why we build relationship now. That's why we have friendship with one another. Is so that we can, iron sharp, sharpens irons, but we come. And we, we're able to confer in our brother. Because we see the gift that God has placed in them as well. Amen? Okay. Uh, Icky, you want to turn some music on there, I guess? Uh, verse number 15. But speaking the truth in love. Here we are again. As an individual of the church, I speak truth in love. You, have no, you better understand what love is. Love is not catering to every wind of doctrine. Love is patient. Love is kind, right? You don't have to put up with everything. In fact, I, I've just been thinking about justice. You remember when Sodom and Gomorrah, God just came down and, right? But other times, Israel went and defeated the enemy. We, right? You, you as an individual. God works through you to betray his kingdom. To, to bring forth justice. I mean, there's a lot of corruption in the world, okay? What are you doing about it? What are you doing about it? What are you doing about it? We're waiting for God to do something, which he sovereignly will and can. What are you doing about it? Just letting it go by? Not mine. It doesn't bother me. It better. <laughs> It's your grandkids and it's your kids, right? And you and the church, the body of Christ. We got to care. <laughs> we got to care. Um, let me finish up. Verse number 16. I love this. But speaking truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects of the head, who is the head in Christ, from whom the whole body being fitted and held together. By that, By that which every, every joint supplies, according to the proper working of each other's, uh, each individual part, causing the growth of the body, for the building of, a, of itself. I love that. I love that. I look at it this way. Every bone, there's a joint. That joint connects the other bone to the other. I think of Jesus, the Father and the Son, as being that connected. We're connected because of Jesus. Connected because of the love of the Father. And in that joint, I mean, it's amazing what's happening. I think it's amazing. 
us who we are, from as we bring together, 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 as we flow together, as of you, to us connected. You're not isolated, unless you isolate yourself. You're not isolated. Lord, we thank you for today. I thank you for my brothers and sisters. God, I just pray that even as you, as we walk through this week, that we would have a heart for your church. We would have a heart for your people. And yes, we have a heart for the unsaved and the lost. Yes, we do. But I, I pray that we would have a, a heart for the, sh- the sheep. For those who are around us. For those that you have placed in our midst, Lord. God, I pray there'd be an excitement that would come in their heart to come, to join together. Lord, to come with an expectation, to come with, Lord, what can I, what can I offer your body today? What can I do in service to you for your body, Lord? God, I thank you for those that you have placed in ministry gifts, Lord, we we thank you for them, Lord God, that those gifts, Lord, that help us even walk through and mature and grow and walk through difficult times. And we just thank you, Lord, for those giftings. We thank you for those individuals that have yielded to the call, all that you are make, uh, causing them to be. And each individual is on that same journey, all that God is causing you to be. So we participate and cooperate with the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. And I thank you, Lord. What you've started, you'll complete. In the precious and mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. You be blessed. You are blessed. Um, we will see you this next week. If you see someone on the street, give them a high five. Amen. Amen. Take someone to coffee this week, okay?